We wanted to give the students an opportunity to do experiments that have not been organized for them. It has to be something that was outside the A-level curriculum and we thought it was really important that they found a link with computer science and maths. We did a project over time so they could think about what they wanted to do, something that would motivate them, something that would be challenging, something that would be fun, and then use their abilities within a group to develop links to science, links to computer science, links to maths, and put it all together into a project. So we are estimating power by dropping maths sticks. We are investigating how tension propagates from the top to the bottom of a fixed like system slinky. If you watch when we drop it, the top falls but the bottom doesn't. We are investigating inertia using biophile pendulums. So it's an ultrasonic sensor, so it outputs sound of 40 kilohertz. And then if something goes in front of it and the sound bounces back, it does a bit of maths and tells you how far away it is. On the first day, it was about deciding what groups to put together. On the second day, it was about what equipment they needed and try to put some method to it. Ideally, on the third day, we would have had some preliminary experiments where they got together with the equipment and tried to see if their experiment really worked. But uh, in reality, because of lockdown, we didn't have time for that. So when, we did, when they did the final experiment, they had thought about it a bit. They didn't think they needed to do preliminary experiments because they thought the equipment was the equipment and it was there for them, as it is normally when we do experiments in school. But they realized after doing the experiments that if they had had an extra day to repeat the experiment, they would have done a lot better. We're using machine learning to analyze this data to show how it can be for research. We are launching tennis balls by bouncing these on the floor and they're going to hit the ceiling. Yeah. Ready? Tell me one. Yeah. Three point one three seven. Yeah, with a million matchsticks. Where's that? Yeah. Okay. And this is the number of times that it hit, and that's how long it took. In time. In seconds, yeah. To do the calculation. Yeah. For a million. Yeah. Wow. And how many are you doing in the practical? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Brilliant. Thank you. So what are you doing? You just literally chucking it. Yeah, there's still one. And I'm starting to count the next one. So, what to do next? Um, now count. I count how many have crossed the lines, and then I divide how many I threw, which is 100, by how many crossed the lines. And then that, that should give us an estimate of pi. When you say crossing the lines, you mean the ones that are on a line on both sides? Uh, as long as one of them touches a line, it counts as crossed. Got you. So, point to one that's crossed. This one. Point to one that's not crossed. Like these. Perfect. Thank you. And what do you do? I'm counting the next load of what we're going to throw. So you count. <laughs> oh, so you give him how many? A hundred? Yeah, that's a hundred then. We can switch voices in the middle. It's fine. when we walk around, they were all having fun, they were all on tasks, they did some really good work, like some of them maybe the experiment didn't work, but the link to computer science, they built some Arduino sensors that were really good and worked very well, 
the, the link to math. Some people did some calculations of very complicated volumes. Some people did um, animations of how the experiment would work. Some people did theoretical work to, 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 um, to predict what the results of the experiment could be. And then they plot together the results with the theoretical calculations. It was all really, um, really nicely put together. Are you on the robotics course? Um, what's it called? Yeah. On the VLA? Because it's my brother, for sure. Yeah. 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 So the concepts around the idea of the wave cycles that are formed when um, a pendulum is released and we want to investigate the different wave cycles that are formed and how they change depending on the common difference in length of each pendulum. Can I I'm just holding on the place right now. Okay, this, this might actually be more noticeable than we think. In LaTeX, we're writing up our physics experiment and we're measuring the pressure inside a Klein bottle compared to the pressure in a beaker and comparing the two to see if properties are different or similar. This is a Klein bottle. Um, it's a fourth dimensional object in 3D space and it's only got one side. <laughs> Rachel. Rachel Riley. They said I look like Rachel Riley. Well, I said I look like Rachel Riley doing countdown. Doing a what? Don't show you countdown. You should love my last one, countdown. Oh, I see. Um, constant, please. <laughs> Bow. And they're done. Eight. So, is, someone, is that swinging yet? Have you swung it? What do you do? What we do is we do this. Swing. Oh, side to side. So it's torsional pendulum, is that? That's what I'm rolling, isn't it? Cool. Better the Beatles. Shake it up, baby, now. We're shaking up, baby. We're shaking up, baby. I do know this is totally going in the vlog, don't you? Swish and shake. Swish and shake. Three, two, one. Oh, that, that's the way, that's the way forward. So you go to the professional one and then you change. Look at that. Now I can see the rings. I can change the ISO. Oh, now. So if I change the ISO. I can go like that. This is the problem we're having. Look. It's a crazy problem. Okay. One, two, three, go. <laughs> You've got absolutely no chance of that. Uh, right. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> so do you think this works very well with large numbers of matches? Yes. yes. I think the programs can be more efficient at large numbers. Yeah. <laughs> and small numbers, it's it more can do efficient. a billion in eight minutes, and it's going to take us like 20 minutes to do 10,000. I think you'd be lucky to do that in half an hour without changing where they landed. But there's going to have to be some deviation of variation. Good luck. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, that's yeah, that's fine close. to me. Three. Two, one, now. That's perfect. Well done. Oh, lovely. Yeah, you can lovely see the common difference. Lovely. You can see the common difference in the, like the cycle in the way. Oh yeah, that looks really good actually. One That's minute. the best one yet. Yeah. The common difference sounds like a bad game show. Yeah. If you now press option, okay. You've got two variable calculations, regression calculations. Mm -hmm. Track it. So, okay, um, how many... Is this still the one that you threw ages ago? The 10,000, yeah. So, for reference, that was about an hour and a half ago? 
Maybe. So, so D. Did we start at half eleven? Okay. We did some other things in between. So. Do you think a practical experiment like this is worth doing? Yes. Definitely not. <laughs> yes, from Jake. <laughs> Definitely not from Anna. Okay. And we look forward to your results. Why? Why? I asked myself that I'm not saying the question. Okay. So where do you record the results? Where's it coming now? Um, do on the sun. That's a temperature sensor, so put that in. Alright, so that measures temperature. Are you looking at temperature based on these results? Yeah, and then there's an app on the phone called Firefox. What's that tell you? And that um, measures the light intensity. Alright, see. What's the units of light intensity? Lux. Lux, perfect. Standard mm. units. And what are the drumsticks for? Drumsticks. Food. Oh, I was like so confused. I thought you meant actual drumsticks. Good work, folks. <laughs> and I think they all realise that when we do experiments in school, first of all, everything seems to work, but sometimes it doesn't. They realise that sometimes an experiment doesn't work, and that's not a failure. This is just how we think about how to solve problem. Many of them got stressed because there were problem after problem after problem, but then they understood that that's it, the work of a scientist. You have problems, then you solve it, and another problem comes up and you solve it. And eventually they learn that whatever your results are, the important thing is to put them within a context and understand how far can they extrapolate the result. I want your graph show. Um, the graph shows the vertical displacement of the tennis ball after it's been launched and we're using that to calculate the velocity to then calculate the momentum. Awesome. Thank you. What are you doing, Chris? I am. Um, I've just finished uh, doing the poster. Oh, cool. So we just need the data bit to fill in. Don't forget, nice pictures too. We like pictures. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing, Zine? I'm drawing the chopper to your life to find the acceleration of this one. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are there videos of you on the screen there? Is that you? Yeah, but I, I just use this one to, to, share, share, to share the video to my computer. Uh, how long did this take, Jake? Like, almost two hours, probably. Two hours? Are we happy with two hours? Yeah. Round again. <laughs> well done. So two hours to do that. How long was the programme? 0 0.004 seconds. <laughs> so what's better, Emir? Uh, definitely your programme. This was a waste of time. No, it wasn't. <laughs> we had fun, you know, counting. 3,450 matchsticks. <laughs> and we use advanced counting techniques, I believe. Very advanced counting. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good though, isn't it? I've definitely use computer science in there. Yeah, the computer solution is a, a, it's a much better way. But, <laughs> but then again, you could argue that none of it has any point because we already know what the value of pi is. We don't know what happened there, it's just an anomaly. So it looks like you're, you had to make judgments about whether the matches were crossing over lines, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. So you may have got that wrong. So that and we could have knocked someone else one. <laughs> <laughs>
The strange thing is that you're deviating more from the two values as time goes on. You'd expect it to be a fire ladder. This is an Arduino. Is it? Okay. This is a fire ladder. 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 You're sitting down? Yeah. You're chilling out? Um, I'm protecting this as you're instructed. Doing a good job. I'm on the board, Dave. Amazing. Oh. Smiley face. There it is. I mean, do you think that's one? Okay, so can we get a bit of video in the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and have a video of the video? Nice and nice. Oh. All in all, they all were very happy with what they did. We were very happy with what they did. There were experiments that would have never been done before. Some of them struggle explaining why things happen, but they have to present it. Now, for the presentation, instead of a typical PowerPoint, which is what we normally would do in school, they did more like what you would do when you go in a conference. They had a poster, they were given a template, and they were each group was defending the poster. And then we were judges and we're going around and asking them all questions. They had to answer questions in terms of the different links. They have to answer questions in terms of what other people have done. So everybody had to know everything. And we thought they did really well.